All right, guys, welcome back to the Deacon of Real Estate podcast. I am Adam. I'm not important. What is important is the Deacon of Real Estate himself, Alex Deacon. Alex, yes. what is going on today, good sir? Oh, man. I'm so important. <laughs> You're very important. What's these going spots. on today? Uh, you know what? Uh, what do you think? What are you thinking about? Checking today? emails, you know, um, checking my spam folder, like returning a boss. phone calls. Oh, yeah. Like a boss. It's um, so many emails, it's crazy. Is it, email's yeah. going to drive us all batty one day. Oh, my gosh. Um, you know what? I think, you know, we've talked about a, a little bit of this, a little bit of that over the past couple months. Something that's, I think, people don't really think about as much until you're in this in this scenario mm-hmm. is should you allow pets in your rental property? Yeah, and define a pet. Mm. Some you know, some people's kids are, mm, maybe I'd rather have a mountain lion living in the house. I've seen adults on leashes recently, Hello. so take mm. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, here we so are. So, how long have you had your pet? That's my son. Yeah, it's my son. Oh, well, oops. 19 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, with this, I mean, this is obviously, th- this is one that... You, you kind of, at least for me, somebody that's typically just been on the, the renting side of, you know, the renter, uh, the, the tenant, so to speak. I, um, I've, sometimes it can be difficult when, when you own a pet, you know, uh, no matter the size. Um, let's talk pros and cons, Alex, because uh, you, I mean, I think we all kind of know some of the cons, but well, let's talk pros and cons. Let me, let me hit you up with a fact. I mean, a quasi-fact. A quasi-fact. So, <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> in the U.S., what I'm told, like around 44% of U.S. citizens' households have a dog. I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that too. It might be a quasi-fact. I'm not sure. Might and 35% have a cat. So, I guess they don't go into like reptiles and rats I guess and not. stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, like people that have like snakes and spiders yes. and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. But, and, and Americans in general have spent somewhere around 60 billion, billion, okay, 60 billion dollars a year on their pets. So what I'm saying is, if you're a landlord, do you want to eliminate maybe half of the population or more? <laughs> so we, you know, we manage 650 units. We have other clients, and they say, well, "We don't want any pets." Okay, it's going to be harder to rent. Now I understand why you don't want pets because I have nothing against pets. I have two dogs. I love them vehemently. I right? also, I also love. I my wanted dog to use that word. I think I said it right. You said it right. Yeah. But it's spelled vehemently. Vehemently. So I shouldn't say it that way. Vehemently. It's like cremation. Say it. What, how you say it? Vehemently. Vehemently. Yeah, I'm probably saying it wrong too. No, I think it's. I've always good. said vehemently. Or so vehemently. what were we talking about? Pets. How much I love my how pets. Much you love your pets. Vehemently. Vehemently. Yes, that means I like them a lot. Basically, <laughs> I love my pets. Grammar. Okay. So my point is, I understand it's not the pet's fault. It's typically the owner's. Right, the owners mm-hmm. don't take care of their pet. They mm-hmm. don't take them for walks. They don't clean up their poop. They let them pee everywhere. And believe me, we've seen pets do a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. So I fully understand why you wouldn't want to rent to a tenant who has a pet. Now that being said, what we'll typically do here is I'll give you an example. I have a nine-unit building. There's like no yard. There's nowhere to take the pets and whatever. So this building. It could be somewhat cat friendly, okay? It's definitely not a dog friendly building. I would not rent this building to someone who had a dog. Um, that's just my choice. Mm-hmm. Now, if I did, could I get more rent? I probably could. But you have nine units. Let's say one of the tenants' dogs is barking all day. Right. Now you have an issue, you know? And it's just, it becomes more of an issue than what you had planned. And then okay? it's like the domino effect. One issue yes. breeds so the next issue. Yeah. You ha- so I guess what I'm saying is certain properties should not be pet friendly. Okay? Could be maybe a cat because cats aren't, you know, barking all day. Now, some single family homes, like you rent a single family home, there's a lot of cases where those folks are going to have a pet. You know, they have a couple kids, they're probably going to have a dog. So uh, if you eliminate those from your tenant pool, then it's going to take longer to rent your property. Mm. So what we do to combat that is we might ask for a pet deposit. And I'm telling you, you'll get some pushback from tenants too. we like, well, what do I need a pet deposit for like a full month's rent? Like, so let's say the rent is $1,500. Well, we want a $1,500 pet deposit. 
And a lot of tenants will go, well, no, no way. Well, then, then don't rent from me. Right. Because $1,500, that, I mean, that dog can literally destroy a whole house of carpet mm-hmm. that's going to cost $3,000 mm-hmm. to replace. Plus, they can do damage to the walls. They can scratch doors. They can they can chew um, moldings. I mean, it's it's incredible that, you know, the pushback you'll get from some tenants and they were like, well, no, we're not going to, we don't want to rent your place then. Okay, then don't. I say, I'll, so we will rent to people that have pets. It just depends on the property. It depends on if it's my property or if it's one of our owners and they're, you know, they're adamant about no pets or only cats or only small dogs under 40 pounds. So it, it's really a personal preference, but you just need to know as a landlord what you're getting into when you say, I don't want pets. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's not good or bad. I'm just saying it's a personal choice, and then you, you leave it at that and, and run and run with it. Be smart about it. Yeah, and I mean, th- this is something, too, that typically, and I, I mean, again, I'm, I'm very green with this, so this is just a, a naive question that I'd like to propose to you. But in a way, you know, when you're saying, like, you know, basically don't ostracize half the population like that, you mm-hmm. know, that has pets, wouldn't you want, I mean, is there, I guess the question is, is there more stability in your experience when you do get that family that might be running where it's like the, the, the wife, the husband and wife, the two kids, the dog versus the two buddies that are renting the house for a little while, you know, while they're doing this or that, you know, I, it, granted, I guess the pet might cause some damage, but maybe not as much damage as like the two fresh out of college kids that are still being, you know, you sure, know what I mean? Sure, there's no way of knowing that either. Exactly. There's just, there's just no way of knowing that. But, you know, lots of investors will say, no, we don't want pets. That's it. That's just... That, that's it. That's that is our policy, and that's fine. So rather have the risk of you know, you know, having a pet go in there and do damage. Let's just eliminate that risk. But you're also eliminating uh, half of the population, mm-hmm. right? I, I like how you said taking the pet deposit because that's a great way to kind of meet in the middle. It's that compromise of kind of like making everybody happy. Then you have you know the pro pet landlords, and they they view our our little pets as uh, a a positive, an attribute, because typically you can get a little bit more rent. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's another thing you can do too: is you might rent, uh, you might advertise it at fifteen hundred dollars, and you might advertise it pet friendly, uh, additional rent for pet. Okay, so it would depend on the pet. If you have two small dogs, maybe it's fifty dollars per dog, mm-hmm. and you may want a pet deposit on top of that. Mm-hmm. Okay, and keep in mind when you explain this to your potential tenant that those pet deposits are refundable. So if you're so sure that Fluffy's going to not do any damage to the the carpet, then then your fifteen hundred dollar extra pet deposit is safe, isn't it? And it's in my bank account, and it's collecting interest for you, because okay? that's the law it has mm-hmm. to collect interest. So why would you be against that? If Fluffy is such a good dog, it's going to sit in my bank account, separate escrow account, collecting interest for you. So Fluffy's actually making you money, and Fluffy's not going to do any damage to the carpet. So we have nothing to worry about, do we? And so. typically, it's, it's typically, just like humans. Animals are also going to have accidents too. <laughs> and the, the, here's the, the the flip side of the coin is if you say no pets, I can I can tell you I don't know how many times, but it's a lot that ends up a pet being there anyway. Mm-hmm. Pet ends up being there. Yep. You know, because one in the mindset in Here, today. Here's what I get. Oh, we're just we're just pet sitting. How many times have you? Actually, pet sitted for somebody. Never I mean, in my you life. Know, my mom's dog mm-hmm. or my grandmother's poodle, whatever. We're gonna pet sit, but yeah, you know, it's always the case. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're pet sitting. You know, it's my it's my sister's dog. Mm-hmm. So I'm telling you, you, you rent to somebody. There's a really good chance they're just gonna slide in their their pet under the radar. Something's better to just protect yourself from the jump that way. Yeah, you don't run into. That. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe just yeah, make it pet friendly, but. Again, that's your choice, and there are pros and cons. Believe me, so like I and I, I absolutely understand both sides of it too. Because like for for myself, I, I I mean I have a dog, but I am I typically am pretty allergic to animals. Uh, but like cats for me is like the the death punch. Mm-hmm. Like I can't even walk into a house that if somebody has a cat, like right. my, my throat will start closing up on me. Oh like, yeah, that's that's the other thing you need to think of, Adam. Mm-hmm. Is when you rent to someone who let's say is allergic to cats, uh, but the prior tenant had a cat. Um, sometimes cleaning the carpet, I mean, sometimes, I don't know, there's a re- residual cat dander or whatever that just stays with the mm-hmm. property. So you have to be careful with that, too. Yeah, you know? Yeah, that's one thing that, so I absolutely, you know, from, from, a, from you know, a tenant side of it, 
Um, but I will say this: I know that there are some there are some landlords out there that lost money, at least from me, over the years because they didn't um, they didn't accept pets. So and I'm not I'm obviously not going to tell anybody how to run their their properties. But there are certain insurance companies that you know may they may frown upon certain dog breeds too. You know, like pit bulls, pit bulls and, and stuff, right. stuff like that. I mean, pit bulls. I, I love pit bulls, but it's it's really the owners that cause them to be. I think, you I totally know, agree. mean and, and nasty. But there are some insurance companies that do not want a pit bull in the property, so you have to be careful. Let's say you do you, you do allow pets, you need to know what kind of pet it is. Mm-hmm. You might have to check with your insurance company on if we'll accept that breed. And two, I mean, what happens, and this is a question I'm asking myself, what happens if somebody moves in a pet and it is a pit bull and that pit bull does and hurts somebody? I was about to ask you that question. Where well, would I, that liability fall? I have no idea. There's so many variables in this business that I don't know how that would affect me as a landlord. Will my insurance cover it? I'll be like, oh, look, I didn't know that they, they, were that they had a dog. Right. Well, here's the devil's advocate talking. Well, shouldn't you be checking on them? No. I, don't, I haven't been in some of my houses for 10 years. I mean, if I've had a tenant for 10 years, I don't go bother them. Right. They pay their rent. I might drive by it. It looks fine. It didn't burn down. I'm good. They don't no call flames. me. There's no issues. They're happy. I'm happy. But they have a pit bull, and the pit bull bit, you know, a little Sally next door and ripped her leg off. Right. And now, the insur- now insurance company, now we have uh, the, sh- the shyster, you know, attorney that has shyster. their billboards up uh, um, along, the, along the highway, and they say, well, we'll get money for you because, damn it, you deserve it. And now you're getting sued. Mm-hmm. And is your insurance company going to cover you? I don't know. But that's why you don't never buy a property in your personal name. You buy it in an LLC. There you so go. There's just there's so many... Like different scenarios, you can never p- completely insulate yourself from some sort of nasty lawsuit or something that could happen. Yeah. So there again, there's pros and cons of do, do, should I have pets? Should I should I not? So I guess maybe bullet point is should I allow pets? If you allow pets, you're going to open up your market to another fifty percent of the population. If you allow pets, you're probably going to get more rent. If you allow pets, you're probably going to get you should get a pet deposit, right, on top of maybe more rent. Mm-hmm. So those are the pros. The cons are if you allow pets, pets can cause damage. Pets can can bite people or hurt people. Um, pets can be a problem when trying to show the property. So let's say that tenant's lease is coming up and they're moving out, but they work all day and their their pet's not crated. Then is it clearly stated in your lease that the pet needs to be crated because you want to show it to potential tenants and you can't show it because the pet's in there? And what and like you said, what constitutes a pet? Because I I live in Elliott mm-hmm. and somebody actually has pet chickens. <laughs> and I'm not making wow. this up. Yeah. And I mean, literally every morning I wake up to these to these roosters and chickens, and it's um, but it's it's comical in a way. But it, that's people. It's a pet to some people, you know. Yeah. So it's one of those where I guess be clear about what you accept and don't accept as pets. And it's, would you find that it's okay to say, hey, listen, we accept cats, dogs, birds, but nothing pet, nothing exotic, nothing that, you know, I mean, it, those those are fair things to put in Yeah, I don't think there. there's any law that says you can't turn down a certain pet or a certain breed of pet. But I, there, there are some new things that have come up recently, maybe in the past five years, that uh, service dogs, yeah. like emotional support mm-hmm. animals, mm-hmm. Which I think is is good and it's bad. I think a lot of times it's just BS. Right. Oh, it's emotional support dogs. I have to pet Fluffy every two hours, otherwise I have a, de- a, de- a depression episode or something. I'm like, okay, whatever. But if they have an emotional <laughs> support dog or animal, and they say that they do, you you have to really tread lightly. You can't turn those people down. Right. You can turn them down because their credit sucks or they don't make enough money or they had a bad landlord reference, but. You can't essentially say no pet. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know if you can essentially charge more money for the pet or if you can even get a pet deposit. I don't know there's a fine line there on emotional support That's animals. It. There is an exception to that rule, even in public places, whether it be eateries, shopping places, I mean, they're, you know, retail establishment. Anywhere you go, I, I think service dogs, it's it's almost like they're, they're mm-hmm. they have... I mean, service dogs different different because that's like a blind person or some might have a service dog, mm-hmm. but emotional support... Yeah, emotional support right. You know, it's just, it's a new one. <laughs> right. This is America, folks. It's yeah. <laughs> land of opportunity, but land of, you know, bureaucracy and, and headache, too. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, but I like that. I like that, though. So it does sound, but you have two pets. What are your pets' names, real quick, before before we head out? 
My pet's name uh, is Ava. She's a miniature Shih Tzu. And Annie, she's a... Uh,